for those of you who may not be familiar with Open RAN, um, so it's a technology that has been gaining a lot of traction in the telecommunications industry over the past few years. So Open RAN is all about breaking down the traditional closed and proprietary systems that have dominated the industry for decades. And instead of building open, uh, so instead we build open and interoperable networks that allow for greater innovation, flexibility, and cost effectiveness. Part of this movement, technology is 5G. Ito yung pinakabago kasing uh, iteration of our uh, wireless communication. So without further ado, let's go uh, deep dive into this uh, radio access technology. So um, to give you an overview, so our topic, uh, the first part of today is talking about what is 5G, um, performance targets for 5G, uh, 5G spectrum services and techniques, and um, what is 3GPP? So a lot of you might have heard of it already. Uh, five key technologies and uh, a bit of discussion on what is control plane, user plane, um, functional split options, and yeah, related key technologies. What is 5G? So we'll be discussing, we'll learn about the different use cases, performance targets, different techniques, uh, roadmap, etc. So let's go to this definition. What is 5G? So 5G is the fifth generation of wireless technology and is the latest iteration of the mobile network that we use to connect our smartphones and other devices to the internet. So it promises to be faster, more reliable, and more efficient than previous generations of wireless technology. So um, we were talking about previous generations. So uh, to give you a review, uh, of course, we have like 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G. Uh, 1G used to be the analog uh, uh, iteration of the wireless communication. Ito yung mm, mga panahon na malalaki pa yung phone and uh, you don't have SMS, it tawag lang. Usually sa mga probinsya, uh, lumaki ako sa probinsya before, we have this, wala kaming, pag walang landline, you have this big phones na hinahatak mo pa yung antena na nagagayat ang tatay mo kasi baka mapusol mo. Um, na uso pa rin yung mga cloning before and all this stuff. But uh, nagagawa niya yung mga nagagawa ng landline before is to make voice calls. And then we have 2G. Uh, we have introduced um, uh, uh, additional uh, services like SMS or yung tinatawag natin na text ngayon. So, and it's digital already. So naiwasan na natin yung mga cloning and all. So um, we have evolved to 2G. So this is around siguro mga nine, late 1990s. And then dyan na nagsimula yung mga trend with the phones. Lahat meron ng phone, lahat ng text, lahat nag, uh, nagsasend ng uh, uh, group chat sa mga, mga, mga kaibigan and all these messages. And then it evolved in the late, uh, in, in the early 2000s, we have the 3G. Uh, it promises uh, 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 faster speed. And we have video calls. Although hindi siya nag-take off that eventually, but yun yung, uh, yun yung promise niya before. So, uh, nag-evolve siya into 3G and then we have the 4G. Uh, mas bumili siya. Uh, we have the Volte. And then we, now we have the 5G. And actually, we there they are already developing the 6G. So, let's focus on the 5G. So, uh, it promises to be faster, more reliable, and more efficient than previous generations. Katulad nga sinasabi na natin. So, um, throughput. So, yun yung speed. So, pag yung usually, pag we go and check gano ba kabilis, and actually, we have this session on checking kung mabilis ba, which is actually normal because we are data-driven now. So, we download, we upload. So, we need, and mm, pag taas ng technology, yung attention span din ng mga tao so they want to eat to, uh, we, they want it to be done faster compared to before and we're looking into gaano ba kabilis tayo makapag-upload makapag-download makapaglaro and all these things that we can do over the internet and overall there are three use cases that demonstrate the diverse range of applications that 5G can support so from enhanced mobile broadband um, let me have this this one Enhanced Mobile Broadband, or the EMBB. 
uh, to massive machine type communications or in the MMTC and the ultra reliable low latency communications. Um, actually, if we look at this triangle, we can see that EMEB is more on the speed and this is more of how many uh, devices can connect at the same time and this is more of the mission critical. Yung mga hindi pwedeng, uh, um, uh, it's, it's a late, uh, the latency should, uh, is very critical with this one. Hindi siya pwedeng malate yung, uh, uh, yung mga packets niya. So we can see here that EMABB is, um, uh, is mobile broadband. So basically, ito yung, yung, uh, uh, yung may mga nakaabot pa ng DSL before. This is what we uh, were using basically when we're browsing the internet. So, uh, ito yung mga sinosubscribe natin uh, sa Sky Cable or sa uh, mga internet service provider. So, uh, it is very throughput intensive. So, dito natin tinitingnan yung speed test kung mabilis ba. Because it's based on the payload. So, kung may malaki kang payload, uh, you're downloading a video of 1 gigabyte. You want to download it. And for those that have uh, experienced yung ADSL before, you, you, you can remember that downloading a 100 MB, uh, MB file, text file, during those times will take you overnight. But now, you can have 1 gigabyte of data downloaded for like maybe 10 minutes or and less. So, ito yung promise ng 5G. Enhanced mobile broadband. And it's wireless. You don't have to be connected to the net. Ah, you don't have to have a, a physical connection. Okay, and then machine type communications. Um, actually, if you look at the bottom two, um, these are uh, what we're looking into 5G, but are not actually there yet. Um, because uh, of course there are some limitations, especially now. Hindi pa naman purely 5G talaga ang na implement worldwide. There are some who have implemented standalone 5G, but actually our 5G now, especially now in the Philippines. Are not that 5G 5G, you know what I mean? Um, it's because we have the legacy uh, network uh, still operating, and I think still the operators are wanting to squeeze more. I mean, hinahabul pa nila yung kita with the legacy, yung mga luma, you know, 4G. 4G was rolled out like when 2000, I can, if I can remember, around 2009. 10 nagro roll out na noon eh to 2010 and we're like we're 2000 2024 20, so more than 10 years so i'm not sure if naka-aro ay na yung mga uh, operators but they're still rolling out and still uh, upgrading so that's why 5G now is non stand alone i mean it's still piggybacking on LTE so um that's why ito pa lang yung na-realize natin ng broadband and which is yun pa lang din naman ang use cases na nagagamit natin. Nagda-download lang naman tayo. Um, yung mga use cases like gaming na uh, na sasatis, nasasatisfy pa naman itong part na to. Diba? Um, uh, but then, there are some use cases wherein you have to connect a lot of devices uh, uh, as like with a smart city. Um, cars, um, IoT devices, uh, mga, mga sensors. So, uh, yan, kailangan uh, pa siyang mabigyan ng real realization on yung mga gamit. Okay? So, in the Philippines, I'm not sure if there is uh, this, uh, I know there are um, talks and there are plans, but currently, I don't think we have it. Um, uh, I know some uh, in, in Singapore, they're, of course, Singapore is small, so they're really into converting the nation state into smart city. So, doon, makikita natin agad yung mga, uh, mga use cases ng MMTC. And then, this ultra-reliable low-latency communication is uh, futuristic din. I mean, uh, you, you know yung mga uh, sinasabi nila na you can do surgery remotely. Yung doctor mo nasa uh, Los Angeles, tapos may operahan dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, it can be realized via this, as in low latency, as in um, uh, for those who are not familiar or maybe have to review, um, latency is different from the throughput because throughput is more on the payload. I mean, 
hang uh, gaano kabilis mo makukuha yung data okay so um hindi hindi mo na kailangan ma-feel kung gaano kabilis yung uh, uh, yung ping as long as makukuha mo yung data but then um when low latency so yung ping mo dapat na pakabilis which is less than 1 millisecond because um like paano ba e- example nito for example uh, siguro sa atin mas makakadelete ng lahat gaming okay so nag nag input ka sa keyboard mo ng uh, ng ng action like babaril ka o sasaksak ka pero kung mabagal ang latency mo um it's 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 a matter of life and death quote and quote sa gaming mo kung mabagal yung latency mo dahil yung 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 response nung keyboard mo is hindi swak dun sa response nung game so that's latency now imagine it's in mission critical applications like sa health um self driving car and meron kang delay so yung 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 um, policy yung yung uh, action yung commands na pinapadala at hindi siya dumating with uh, 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 the, the right latency then it's a matter of life and death sa totoong buhay okay so so that's that's it so this is actually uh, basically 5G so this triangle sum it up i mean uh, paano mo masasabi na you're already in 5G and when you had this and currently we have the top one the EMMBB and in future we can see this two being realized i hope so yeah, here in the philippines yeah okay so um 5G networks continue to be deployed around the world and we can expect to see even more exciting and innovative applications that take advantage of this advanced wireless technology. So performance targets. It, it, um, kasi we're talking about 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. How can we differentiate each other? Um, so we can um, differentiate this generation by these performance targets. Pag na-meet niya tong mga to, ito yung sasabi mo na, ah, 5G na ako. Okay? So, um, like a peak rate of 20 gigabits per second. Okay? Uh, or 100. This is peak data rates. Of course, uh, I, I, I don't think a person can get this much. But uh, uh, the, the target on a user level would be like 100 Mbps. I mean, sa'yo lang talaga. Kasi because now we're getting... The, the the ISP will tell you ah we're giving you 100 Mbps pero sa totoong buhay 50 lang yung nakukuha mo because this is a shared network yeah so um but in 5G uh it's prom- it's promising uh, a peak rate of 20 gigabits per second it's uh getting you 100 Mbps whenever needed okay um it's three times the spectrum efficiency the air traffic capacity of uh 10 uh, megabits per second per square meter and then this one um on the massive uh, massive massive machine type communication uh like a million of devices per square kilometer and 100 times network energy efficiency and then uh yun yung kanina i think nakita ko sa tanong kanina is a uh, 1 millisecond latency for uh ultra reliable low latency communication which is instant action okay the 3GPP has also defined performance targets for 5G network in technical report 22.861 so actually uh, sila yung nag-umupo one day or you know, one day, uh, a series of meetings na how can you say a network is 5G? So ito. Okay? And then you can imagine in 6G kung ano pa. So that would be a different story. But let's focus uh, uh, more uh, on the 5G. So meeting these performance targets is essential for the successful deployment of 5G networks and the realization of the full potential of this advanced wireless technology. So we're not seeing the full potential yet. And actually, um, there's not much of use cases, especially in the Philippines yet, for 5G. We're more on downloading, downloading ng talaga eh, and gaming. So um, uh, I think the massive machine communication would be a, a thing also because we're um, automating everything now. Uh, uh, so uh, sensors because we we are a, a we are a country in the ring of fire so we're relying on a lot of sensors and I think this MMTC uh, use case would be a, a great uh, help in nation building yeah so it, this is just um, if you want to to read more 
on the details talaga on the ITU uh, uh, recommendation, ito yung mga documents niya and the 3GPP references. Okay? So, basta 5G, ito yun. Okay? Pag, pag na-reach na natin yung one, I think ito siguro yung huling ma-achieve natin in a less than one millisecond latency. So, we're full 5G. And note that this is overlapping with the 6G. So, by the time na okay na tayo dito, nandiyan na yung 6G. So, uh, magkakaroon na naman tayo ng, <laughs> ng webinar about that one. Okay? So, 5G is a wireless communication technology that operates on a much higher frequency band than previous wireless technologies with frequencies up to uh, 100 gigahertz. Okay? This enables the use of much larger bandwidths up to 1 gigahertz or more, which can deliver much higher data transfer rates and lower latency than previous wireless technologies. So um, those that are in the telecommunication industry now, you can see that we're, uh, 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 you can see the spectrum that's being used in the Philippines. So um, uh, new radio or the 5G is on the uh, higher scale of the spectrum. Okay. One of the key technologies used in 5G is millimeter wave uh, communication. So millimeter wave, but we're, we're, why are we talking about meters? Uh, if you go back to your communications 101, um, the, the wavelength is inversely proportional with the frequency, right? Uh, right? Lambda is equal to C over F, right? So the, the higher the frequency you have, uh, the mas, mas lalaki yung wavelength mo. So that's the uh, long wavelength, short wavelength, yeah. So, uh, kaya uh, ito yung term niya, millimeter wave. So higher frequency, uh, nasa millimeter na tayo, uh, which operates as a frequency above 24 gigahertz. Millimeter wave communication enables the use of much larger bandwidths, up to 800 megahertz or more, which can support data transfer rates of 10 gigabits per second. Nga. So, however, millimeter wave communication has a shorter range than previous wireless technologies and can be affected by obstacles like buildings and trees. So, um, you go back to communication 101, diba? Yung, uh, let's go back to AM, FM, diba? So, why is AM mas umaabot hanggang probinsya? Because they are on the lower spectrum and FM is on the higher spectrum. So, uh, mas, mas, mas sinasabi nga nila na AM is gumagapang sa lupa and FM is over the stratosphere. So, ganito rin yan. Uh, mas tumaas pa tayo. So, can, you can imagine uh, the effect of the uh, the fading and all this uh, physical effect on the radio transmission, on the, on the radiation. So, to overcome the limitations of millimeter wave communication, 5G networks also use massive MIMO. So, later, we'll discuss bakit. So basically, uh, we have the multipath fading. Balik ulit tayo sa communications 101 natin. Multipath fading, pag binato mo yung radiation, the the far uh, the further you go away from the transmitter, mag magaano siya, nagdeteriorate, nagdi-degrade hanggang sa mawala. So may limitation lang kung hanggang saan mo nabubuga yung signal. So uh, and it affects the frequency that you use. Ah, the frequency will affect how far you can go. So lower frequency uh, the farther you can go, uh, short, uh, the higher the frequency, the uh, shorter you can go. Because we go back on the wavelength, so um, we have a uh, uh, longer wavelength on the high frequency. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, uh, we have, so you have the high frequency, right? So uh, uh, the higher frequency, the shorter the wavelength, so it's more siyang uh, uh, magdeterry rate compared with the low frequency pero mahaba. Okay? So, to uh, to overcome nga na millimeter wave communication, you use a massive MIMO. Okay? Uh, a massive MIMO uses multiple antennas on both the base station and the mobile device to improve signal quality and increase the capacity of the network. Okay? And with massive MIMO, of course, uh, with um, go back again to Communications 101, if you have a uh, low frequency uh, if you have low frequency so you can go further uh uh you can also have a, uh antenna gain uh the medyo ma malawak okay so if 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 you have uh a gain that would allow you like 65 beam width beam width 
So, medyo malawak siya. But if you go higher frequency, you can have like uh, focus the gain, uh, higher gain. So, magiging directional na siya. And having a directional uh, propagation, uh, so, imagine mo before isang buga to. Uh, drawing natin to. Yan. Isang buga yan. Before. Okay? So, if we apply gain here, uh, uh, the higher the gain, magiging more directional siya. So, yan. Instead na magiging ganyan, ayaw mabura. Okay. okay. Okay, magiging ganyan na lang. So, ito yon. So, with a directional uh, propagation, pwede mo silang paghiwahiwalayin. Naisip nila, oh, pwede mo paghiwahiwalayin. And hindi sila maka-interfere with, with each other. So, you can have been forming. Okay? So, instead of maghati-hati kayo sa isang buga, one phone can be given his own beam. And this can be very effective on higher frequencies. Which is 5G now. So that's why we have been forming. And um, uh, the been forming, which directs the signal towards the user, improving signal strength and using interfer interference. Yep. Because uh, going back to 101, ulit, communication 101, you null point dito. So uh, you will reduce interference with each other. Because you will cancel out dito sa mga points. Na yan. So uh, in effect, may sarili kang beam. Yeah. May kanya kanya na kada UE. UE is user equipment, which is a technical term for the phone or the device. Okay? Uh, 5G networks also use advanced technologies like network slicing, which is this one, uh, which enables the creation of multiple uh, virtual networks on a single physical network, allowing different types of uh, traffic to be prioritized and managed separately. Okay? This can improve network efficiency and support a wider range of applications and services from enhanced mobile broadband to massive machine communications. So, ano yung sinasabi lang niya, pwede mo kasi pag-iwahiwala niya. Right now, kasi we're doing EMBB, right? Like what, what I'm saying a while ago, uh, we're more on broadband pa. But then, if we really fully get the full potential of 5G, you can separate the EMBB, may sarili siya. So, dito yung mga nagda-download lang ng mga files. And then, mayroong iba na May mga UEs na uh, uh, dedicated lang for uh, maybe self-driving cars. So, mga hindi pala phone to. Kunyari, cars pala. Yan. Or meron kang pipe dito na para lang sa mga sensors. Kunyari ng DOST or ng uh, pag-asa. Mga sensors nila, di ba? So, they can put out, uh, out sensors in the remote areas. Tapos, makapadala sila. And then, dito papasok yung mga edge computing. So later on, I think that would be a course. So nandun yung mga data, and then papadala nila sa batch and all these things. So may kanya-kanya. So network slicing is parang um, paghihiwahiwala yung itong mga services na to. Okay? Na uh, may sarili kang uh, uh, virtual network for you. Okay? So overall, 5G is a significant advancement in wireless technology with potential to support a wide range of new and innovative uh, applications and services. So, yan. Beam forming. Uh, ano ba to? Uh, uh, LTE, dual connectivity. Ito yung nangyayari right now in the Philippines. Ha? Uh, although, I think there is an operator. Uh, hindi ako magdinima. May mga operator na may, I think there is a standalone na sila. Okay? Operator. And, but I think the majority of the operators in the Philippines are still on non-standalone. So, when you say non-standalone, still piggybacking on the LTE. So, dual connectivity. So, later on, we will uh, see paano siya nangyayari, but essentially, buhay na tong LTE nung dumating si 5G, so ginamit niya muna. Bakit? Mas mura. So, uh, na makapag-deploy agad ako ng 5G without spending that much because I have this legacy network here, LTE. Okay? And then, cloud-optimized architecture. So with 5G uh, and uh, the split options later we'll discuss, uh, you have a more flexibility to cloudify the network. Okay, so um, for those uh, uh, engineers or, or professionals na nandito, you will would know that processes, um, functions are being cloudified na, di ba? Data are being cloudified na nowadays. So, uh, uh, mas mura na kasi na, like, parang uso na ngayon business model na, parang nagsimula yan noon eh, uh, before, the business model is, 
yung traditional business model na isang may-ari like for example tayo ako nito uh, akin lahat akin ang computer kahit chinelas akin yung yung sabon na ginagamit mo sa sa CR sa kumpanya but then the business model evolve right and you try to um mm, uh, disaggregate those right so yung yung pagpapatakbo ng CR hindi na sa kumpanya kumuha na ng third party. Yeah. Kaya makita mo sa mga companies, di ba? May third party na tagalinis, na maintaining, uh, maintaining the facilities. So, iba. And then, nag, uh, mag-further pa sila na even the processes, the business processing, kaya nga yung BPO, di ba? Business processing, outsourcing. They outsource it na, na the company and then, nina-outsource na yung ibang function. And then, it it further evolved na in, even in technology that we're disaggregating everything na even for the data handling or going into the cloud na instead of maintaining your own server may iba na so babayaran mo na lang siya mas mura kasi hindi na sasakit ang ulo ko and then even in the te- telecom right right now the towers are now being disaggregated from the MNOs na yung sakit ng ulo ng um uh, pagkuha ng site kung saan tatayo yung tower hindi na magiging sakit ng ulo ng mga MNOs or ng mga operators, ng mobile network operators, MNO. Hindi na lang sakit ang ulo yon. So, they, what, they, they, what, what they did is to disaggregate those function, yung tower. Kaya ang nagkaroon ng mga common towers ngayon. Right? Iba na yung, nag, yung nagpapatakbo. So, yan. So, uh, with, 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 with this, uh, we go into the 5G and later on, you will see the network functions. You will see that we have more flexibility to cloudify. And yeah, and would be uh, more efficient for everyone, if for the business and for the technical. Okay, and then let's go back. What is spectrum? So let's go back to communications one hundred one. Uh, we can see here uh, uh, na kinabisado natin to for 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 the ECE, the ECTs there. Kinabisado natin yung isa isa dahil sure may exam eh. <laughs> even for the the board. Pero now we're just looking at the whole that the the spectrum makikita natin dito ngayon yung sinasabi ko kanina that the the higher the higher frequency um the more uh the wavelength uh, becomes shorter so makita mo diyan no nagiging shorter yan meron para tayo dito uh, uh visualization so makikita mo dito tumataas yung frequency uh umiikli yung uh wavelength and mas nagiging susceptible siya okay uh mas since nagiging susceptible siya with the physical world, mas umiikli kung hanggang saan siya umaabot. So makita natin dito yung mga radio waves natin. Nandito tayo. Nandito yung TV, UHF, VHF, and then uh, 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 wireless communications. And then we have the microwaves here. And then the infrared. And then we have the visible light. Okay? So, and then beyond the visible light, these are all the ionizing uh, ionizing radiation. Okay? So, uh, dito pa lang, um, if 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 someone tells you na masama ang 5G um hindi kasi we we are in, in the non ionizing region okay we are not going beyond the visible visible light okay so hindi naman tayo si the hawk or yung if we we watch MCU uh yung pag snap ni Thanos that's gamma ray so that's this kaya nga walang tao na pwedeng gumawa noon humawak ng 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 ng, uh, ng uh, gauntlet gauntlet okay infinity gauntlet because the energy that surges from there is gamma rays okay anto gamma it is gamma gamma rays yeah so yun di ba so imagine mo so kung yun yung ginagamit natin so talagang magagayat yung mga tao <laughs> so so hindi ta- which is hindi na hindi natin kaya kasi it will take much energy to produce this kaya nga tong mga gamma rays nito lumalabas lang to sa pag lumabas ka na ng mundo eh di ba so uh, so yan yung mga ionizing radiation yung mga nakakapag uh, it will alter your DNA it art alter your physical appearance dito sa part na to but we are here in the radio wave dito yeah actually microwaves here uh, uh 5G actually we're we're here going here pa paakyat tayo dito kaya nga yung later ma, ma ano natin yung mga sub five uh, sub 6G uh uh sub uh, uh yung FR1 FR2 dito natin makikita yan so 
Ito, microwave nga, ginagamit natin sa pagluluto to eh, di ba? Kasi siguro yung iba, isinasabi nila, mas tamado yung 5G kasi malapit na tayo sa fi- microwave. Which is actually, oh, pero in, wala naman taong tumatapat sa tapat ng microwave dish, right? Okay? And, yeah, I remember before, nung kabataan ko, we we had, <laughs> kabataan ko naman, sobrang, yung, I mean, yung early days of my telecom uh, profession, um, nung mga 2G pa, uh, minsan nagkakamali kami na patay yung site, pero, kasi kunyari, nag-scan kami, uh, I had this one instance na tumawag ako sa, uh, sa, sa command center, o yung tinatawag namin na uh, sa NOC, and pinapapatay namin yung site, eh hindi pa pala napapatay, pero tinanggal na namin yung kable. So, totoo, ma- nararamdaman mo talaga siya na parang mainit. Um, pero may anak naman ako ngayon, so hindi mo ako nabaog. <laughs> so, per- I think, pero kung, kung, kung tumagal-tagal siguro, uh, ano, siguro, I think, uh, pero yeah, mararamdaman mo yun eh, uh, parang umiinit. So, totoo nga, yung ganyan. Pero, Uh, yung sinasabi ng mga tao sa mga phones nila, that's, that's, that's low-powered. So, I don't think that would uh, uh, alter your DNA or magkakaroon ka ng cancer or anything. So, ito, pakita nyo to pag may mga ganyan uh, nag, uh, kung mga questions sa, sa wireless technology, especially for 5G. Okay? So, five, Spectrum is the fundament, fundamental asset that provides wireless connectivity. This is a state-owned. This is owned by the state. Kaya, ito sa lahat ah wala namang walang walang bansa na nililibre to so mahal to so uh, million ang binabayad ng mga operators dito uh, at pinag-aagawan you remember before that uh, na meron pang SMC they try to get into tele uh, this space uh, nagtayo sila and they have that the, the low frequency uh, 700 megahertz uh, medyo maganda siya kasi the 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 lower the frequency, mas malayo na rating mo. So, mas tipid siya kasi kaunti lang site ang pwede mong gawin. Kasi pag the less, uh, the higher the frequency, the less distance, so kailangan mo maraming site para hindi, para magkaroon ka ng overlap, di ba? So, kaya yun, nung, nung pinagbili ni SMC yung buong company niya, pinagkatian ni Globe at ni Smart yung, yung, yung spectrum na yun, yung 700 dito. Okay? Na, uh, Pilag, uh, hindi naman pinag-agawan. Hinati talaga sa kanila equally and malaki rin ang bayad. And that is state-owned. Okay? Uh, usually goes into congressional uh, oversight. So, nagbibigay sila, sila ang nagbibigay ng license. But even the, you know, if we go to EBS-CBN, they lost this asset. Right? So, yan. So, malaki yung kinikita ng gobyerno dito. So, yan. It is an invisible electromagnetic wave generated by radio transmitting device. Um, and that's the reason why this is state-owned. Kasi imagine mo, uh, parang e-bike lang, di ba? Ayan, let's go. E-bike. Walang, uh, wala siyang uh, regularization, uh, wala siyang, anong tawag doon? Uh, reg- uh, regulation. Okay? Walang regulation. So, tiyan mo, kung saan-saan na lang, kung sino-sino lang gumagamit. Kasi magkano lang naman ang e-bike ngayon, di ba? So instead nga naman na bumili ka na sa sakyan, mag e na lang ako. So I can go, kunyari, uh, one way, pero sinasalubong ko. Kasi walang regulation eh, kahit sino pwede mag-own. So that's the reason why this is state-owned, because kailangan i-regulate. Hindi pwede gagamitin ko to, gagamitin ko to, hindi nagkaanuhan kayo, nagkakaroon ka ng interference, lalong nagkaroon ng uh, problema, right? So re- regulation actually is a key here. So kaya ina-assign to ng gobyerno at hindi ka basta-basta rin makaka-own. Uh, like for example, may isang bagong entry tayo. O sabi natin, yung dito, um, before they were given the spectrum, meron silang bond and meron din silang targets okay? uh, na kailangan mong magawa in this span of time. Like maybe I think 5 years or 10 years, I, I don't remember. So yun. So depende yan sa mga gobyerno. And this is uh, measured in Hertz. Yeah, alam na naman yan. Uh, operators acquire a license to certain frequencies for giving period. Yan, yan siya sabi ko. Ayun, spectrum user speak. Yan, yan. Yan yung kinikita natin dyan. Uh, licenses are normally 10 to 20 years. Okay? And then, let's go with the frequency band. Usually, in the Philippines, we're using 3500. We're still on the FR1. Okay? Uh, mm, kasi, usually, the other FR2 would be more on the uh, standalone uh, 
uh, model. But na here we have 3,500. I think N78 here. 78, 77, 79. Yeah, ito lang. 77. And it's on TDD. Yeah, actually, when we, we ask, but, but TDD on the higher, um, uh, mas efficient ang TDD. It's as, TDD kasi is asynchronous. When you say FDD, uh, frequency duplex, duplex, you have the uh, downlink, uplink, di ba? So, may downlink ka, dapat equal yung sa uplink. Pair yan, lagi, pair. Kaya lang, for, for the higher frequency, masyadong scarce na. Kaya mo, kailangan mo mas malaking bandwidth eh. Kung magaganito ka, kunyari, kailangan mo ng ganyang bandwidth, so, kailangan mo tapatan ng isa pa for the uplink, di ba? So, eh, wala na naman. This is a scarce resource. So, that's why you usually use TDD. So, asynchronous siya, yung downlink mo, then uplink, downlink, uplink. Um, bakit mas mounting uplink? Um, usually na uh, usually may mga features to eh. You can adjust the configuration of the DDD. You can go 64, you can go 41. But then um uh by uh behavior, mas ma-downlink ang mga tao. Mas ma-downlink ang behavior. Mas maraming kailangan uh uh, uh, uh mga function or operations pa downlink. Kaya mas nabibigyan siya ng uh ng mas maraming uh part, ah, ng masaming spectrum. But then you can still adjust it. So, depende sa implementation, depende sa operator, depende sa gusto. Okay? So, but yun. Okay? Pa bang meron dito? Ayan. So, yan, uh, uh, just to give you an overview, uh, ito yung mga ibang frequency na ginagamit natin before with 2G, 3G. We're actually using FDD sa mga legacy net, uh, legacy generation ng like 2G and 3G. Uh, uh, mas malayo. So, makikita mo yung mga, mga kung yung mga site dito is uh, mga like 1 kilometer. Uh, kung nababasa niya, basta 1 kilometer yan. So, if you go up with the spectrum, mas kailangan mo nang pagdikitin itong mga site. Because your uh, uh, yun nga, sabi ko yung wavelength, mas umikli. Mas umikli yung distance. Okay. So, what is 3GPP? Uh, five, uh, the 5G standard is created by the third generation partnership project, which is the 3GPP. Uh, it's a col collaboration between several communication uh, standards or telecommunications standards organization. Okay? The 3GPP brings together representatives from organizations around the world to develop the technical specifications for wireless communication technologies, including 5G. These specifications define how the technology should operate, including the frequency bands, data transfer rates, and other technical detail details. The TDGPP works closely with other standardization organizations such as the ITU or the International Te Telecommunication Union to ensure that the 5G standard is globally recognized and adopted. The 3GPP has released several versions of the 5G standards with additional updates and enhancement planned for the future. So you, you really need to have like sit down and discuss. Kasi uh, siguro this is a lesson from previously, right? Kaya ka nga nagkaroon ng, nagkaroon, like previously you have the English system and you have the metric system. So nagkaroon ng usap-usap doon pero syempre may mga... Uh, may mga ego na ayaw matalo. That's why uh, a certain country adopted ito. English system pa rin sila. But the whole world actually uh, adopted a metric system. Uh, even for the TV, di ba? Before, may mga mga PALS uh, uh, and then NTSC, di ba? So, mag may iba ibang ano. So, may mga, may, may mga equipment katuloy na hindi mo madadala sa isang country dahil they're not using the same um, uh, protocols or the same standards. That's why they have to ha have a sit down here at the GPP um, uh, to have partnership and discuss ano ba dapat ang, ang, ang susundin natin. And para lahat, pag kunyari, the, the vendors, the uh, chip makers, the phone makers, alam nila kung ano yung i-design nila because they're uh, following a standard. Okay? And the 5G standards has some roadmap. Okay? 
uh, uh, 3GPP has been developing the 5G standard since 2016. Actually, um, actually, it's in release 15. Actually, release 14 is uh, uh, release 14. If those four with the familiar uh, of how releases from 3GPP is uh, is happening, uh, is mostly on LTE. But na mention na dito na okay mo ka 5G na tayo ganyan, ganyan. And then ito sa release 15 dito na talaga yung 5G phase 1. Okay? So uh ang nangyayari kasi the standards are being discussed even before the actual generation. Like for example the the 6G nagdidigid discussion na ngayon uh while the 5G is here. Okay? So ganun din nung may LTE pa noon, pinag-uusapan na na anong next natin, kailangan mas mabilis pa. So that's why they're discussing 5G. And that was tar- started or initially discussed or initial studies on the release 14. Okay? So release 15 introduced the initial specifications for 5G, uh, including the use of millimeter wave dito. Okay? Uh, mili- uh, millimeter wave frequencies. So sabi nila, wala namang gumagamit sa taas, baka pwede natin gamitin. Okay? Uh, and sabi nila, oh, mas, mas, mas ano yan, mas, mas intense yung yung, yung uh, uh, in, uh, uh, spectrum dyan, sa taas niya yung energy. So, we can we can really use it. Sabi na, may ikli, may ikli lang yan eh. O, oh, edi, kaya nagkaroon, napag-usapan na rin yung small cell later on with the releases. Uh, napag-usapan yung massive MIMO. Napag-usapan na yung beam forming. Yan. So, umaga, nag-brainstorm sila. Yung mga anak ng just na matatalino, nandito lahat. <laughs> Pag nag-uusap sila. Okay? So, uh, yan, yan. Ah, so, yan. Sa release 15, uh, introduce yung millimeter wave the introduction of massive BIMO, antenna technology, um, the use of network slicing to support. So, dito na pala napag-usapan sa phase 1. So, uh, release 15 also included uh, the 5G NR specification. So, dito na unang ginamit yung new radio uh, na term. And then, we go to uh, release 16 that was on 2000, early, 2000, uh, early 2020s. So it introduced several new features to the 5G standard. So including the ultra reliable yon. Dito na pumasok yung ultra reliable low latency uh, which is important for mission critical application yung sinabi ko kanina like autonomous vehicles and industrial automation. Uh, release 16 also introduced support for vehicle to everything communication communications which enables vehicles to communicate with other vehicles and infrastructure improving safety efficiency. Actually, sa vehicle, sa V2X, ito yung V2X. Kung, gust- kung mahilig kayo mga mag-google, google, magbasa-basa, yan, basahin niya yung V2X. And I can, I can remember a movie here. Yung, uh, ano nga movie doon? Uh, may movie yun eh, kay Tom Cruise. Diba? Yung, kaya manalimuta ko, basta may movie siya, as makikita mo doon, mga self-driving cars, diba? Uh, uupo na lang siya, tapos tumatakbo, hindi nagkakabanggaan. Okay? So, Malay nyo, in the future, pati mga e-bikes magiging V2X na rin, di ba? So, hindi siya nagiging problema. But then, anyway, uh, yun. So, dito na pag-usapan na yan, release 16. And then, you have on the release 17, which is currently under development. But actually, this uh, uh, this has been finalized, I think. I'm not sure. Because this is, should be done by the end of 2022. So, this introduced several new features. The enhanced support for massive IoT. So actually, dito na pag-usapan na, na, na ito na yung IoT eh, pero they have massive IoT dito. Uh, maybe this is more on the realization of one, ha- 1 million devices per square kilometer. So yung full potential ng 5G. Okay? Which will enable the deployment of large-scale IoT networks with improved energy efficiency and coverage. So... Uh, yun, na- naalala ko na naman dito yung uh, yung movie ni Tom Cruise, di ba? Makita mo doon, papasok ka ng isang store, i-scan lang yung, magkakaroon ka ng retina scan, yung i-scan yung mata mo, and then ma-identify ka na. So, that's a, that's IoT. I mean, you have a sensor, it detects, and then it sends data, and then bumalik agad na, Hi, Mr. Ano ang pangalan niya doon? Mr. Anders, hindi, ano? Mr. Anders, <laughs> Matrix pala yun. Basta yun nga, panuuri niya yung movie na yun, di ba? Pag pumasok yun ng store, uh, sabihin sa kanya, hi, hello, uh, Mr. Ganyan, uh, uh, ito yung huli mong binili, ano uh, mong gusto mong bilhin. So, ganong kabilis. Uh, that's a use case, di ba? Uh, I mean, pinagtatawa na natin. Even ngayon, lumabas yung Apple, ano ngayon lumabas ngayon? 
may lumabas ngayon is the yung Glass Google, ah uh, ini Google Glass pala yon. Yung basta yung ano yung um uh, yung sinusot sa mata. I forgot what they call, they call it. Um uh that's also a use case uh, uh of a uh, highly uh, low latency. I mean if if you are to have augmented reality you have the response time should be fast so yan dito yan uh, dito define so release 18 of course is still underway a standard is currently under development and expected to be published in 2023 so i'm not sure if it's really finalized in the ako updated but uh, yeah, ito yung mga enhanced features and 5G standards. So overall, the evolution of the 5G standard from 15 up to release 17 has brought significant enhancements and improvements to technology, including support for new applications and services, improved energy efficiency, and increased reliability and security. So imagine from 2017 to 2020, ganyang kahaba nag-usap-usap. And... Of course, hindi rin naman ganun. Hindi naman pork yung nag-usap-usap na. Eh, nandiyan na yung use cases. Pero although nandiyan na yung mga devices, may mga redevelop na. But then, this is like a Bible for them. So if I'm a vendor, if I'm a chipset maker, if I'm a phone maker, ito yung pagbabasihan ko. Because if hindi ako susunod dito, wala, hindi, mapapag-iwanan ako. Okay? So it's, it's a classic example of like Android before. Android before um, is an open source and parang um uh lahat maraming nung panahon abutan ko to college ako eh nung sa Android uh is an open source and it's also a para rin 3GPP yung um yung mga nag-uusap-usap dito about the standards and how to to develop how to uh, how to uh program so and then Nokia mayan silang Symbian OS di ba so so ayaw nilang ano Sumali dito. But then, eventually, this took off. And napag-iwanan. Kaya nawala yung mga Nokia phones natin. Hindi na naging compatible. Because if you go now, most of the phones are Android. And pag gagawa ka ng program, lahat ng mga programmers are looking into this. Ano ba yung standard? Ano ba yung protocols? Para compatible ako. That's it. Same lang din sa 3GPP. If the makers, if the companies don't read or don't abide by this uh, standards, hindi sa makakasali, right? And that's also the aim of the Open RAN, right? Later on, uh, na they're doing the standards also uh, so that everyone can join. Everyone can make a company and uh, do a, a, a services, an, an AI services or a machine learning services or maybe a, a hardware services uh, a hardware uh, uh, supplier can join. Okay. So let's go back. Uh, let's go to the five G system or the architecture. Uh, basically, uh, it's the same. Parang yung yung rudimentary or yung basic principle is let's go back to the two G, di ba? Uh, uh, Yung, if you have your elective before, if you're into GSM or 2G before or 3G, you, we will always see that it's actually three part. Okay? You have the UE here or the user equipment. Ito yung phone. Ito yung dongle. Ito yung mga devices. Ito yung mga sensors. Okay? Ito yung hawak ng tao. Ito yung nasa atin. Okay? Ito yung nakikita natin. Ito yung nararamdaman natin. Ito yung nabibili natin. Yung Kasi zero percent interest natin for 12 months. Okay? Um, and then you have the access network, which uh, uh, is uh, kung saan kung connect yung UE. Okay? And this is the wireless part. And then you have the core. Okay? And this one goes out into uh, other entities. And most, uh, before we go, ang dati voice call lang tayo, so we go to PSTN. Okay? Uh, so, Meron kang phone, nakakatawag ka sa landline. Or you can go to packet packet core network. Okay? Uh, you can go uh, to the internet. Yan, cloud yan. Internet kunyari. Yan. So, nakakalabas ka. So, dito yun. Okay? So, kaya yung UI mo before. Kasi you remember, dun sa mga medyo kasing idaran ko, um, uh, yung phones natin, yung mga Nokia before, tawag lang, di ba? So, you didn't... Actually... 
uh, yung mga batang 90s. Tayo yung mga uh, sana may mga batang 90s ito. <laughs> hindi mga mile- yung hindi yung mga Gen Z, pero yung mga millennials diyan. He didn't imagine, di ba? Uh, uh, na, na, naabutan ko na landline, rotary pa nga yun dati, yung iniikot-ikot mo. And he didn't imagine na darating yung panahon na, uh, na darating yung panahon na pwede mong sabihin on the way ka na lang. <laughs> Kasi before pag tumawag ka, on, uh, at least na ako. So, sabay-sabay lahat. Kasi hindi ka pwedeng mali. Dahil there's no way to know where you are. But now, can you imagine na tatrack ka na? Tatatrack ka na ng show, tama kung nasang ka. Na, uh, be, puta ako ng Quezon City, pero nasa Tagaytay ka. Mga ganyan. You didn't imagine it before. But now, uh, you can do everything. I mean, um, uh, pare, anong tawag sa ganito? Teka, Google ko. Right there and there. Five minutes, alam mo na. You didn't imagine it. I, I remember before, yung transition na yan, um, I'm still using Nokia phone. Uh, yung, yung meron pang qwerty qwerty pa yung yung skill yan eh hindi hindi niya hindi niya yun yung hindi skill na matatuto ng mga gen z eh. yung mag yung nagte-text ka nang hindi nakatingin so kunyari nagte-text ka uh, may ginagawa ko yan nagluluto ka nagte-text ka nakaka-text ka na walang maling spelling pero hindi ka tumitingin sa qwerty yan skill yan life skill yan um yung panahon na yon tapos um dumating yung mga smartphones um na touch screen Uh, medyo nag-boom yan nung lumabas yung Apple. Uh, okay. Kasi nauso na yung uh, ano ba yung nauso dati? iPad. Ah, uh, iPad. Yung, yung um, uh, MP3 player pa lang yun noon eh. Tapos naging touchscreen siya. Tapos ginawa siyang phone. And that time, uh, mga, anong year ba yun? Basta may mga ganong year. <laughs> uh, na nagawa kong mag online banking via an Apple phone. Okay. So, yung time na kailangan kong mag-transfer, pero papunta ako ng banko. So, habang nakasabiyahe ako, nagawa ko yon And I was amazed at that time. And yung, uh, mind you, hindi pa web to noon. Um, uh, ano pa to, yung mga static HTTP pa before, uh, mga uh, na, um, na napakasimple na mga interfaces. So, medyo, medyo may struggle pag nag-open ka. Pero ngayon, ang dami na. Uh, you can have animations and all. So you really don't know how a technology progresses over time. And um uh although ganun yung progress natin, uh ito pa rin yung basic natin, yung rudimentary structure natin that you have your equipment here. Of course you have to have an access point which is this uh uh um the radio access network which is yung pinag-uusapan natin ngayon and which is also what we're dealing with open RAN. Uh, and then you have the core network. So uh, here, uh, ano ba tong sinasabi nila na TGPP next generation na lang? Of course, ito yung lahat ng mga nasa specification ng 3GPP, yung napag-usapan natin kanina. And you have the non-3GPP access network. Uh, why is there a non-3GPP access network? Because you're uh, connecting to other other than the radio access network. You're connecting to a Wi-Fi. Right? So that's non-3GPP. It's a different specification. Uh, if I can remember, it's i 3 all e11 something that's the the uh, the pro, uh, that's the uh, specification sa sa wifi so you can connect kaya nga may mga time na uh, pag nasa bahay ka para tipid ko connect ka sa wifi ng kapitbahay or if nasa labas ka at wala ka nang at nilak na ng kapitbahay mo yung password you go babayad ka ngayon sa globe as a smart okay which is a radio access network so yan so that's a 5g system so basically yan ano bang nanito So ito yun. Alam ko tinanong kanina ito eh, 5G CN. So yun lang yun, 5G kaya CN is core network. Okay? So kung meron tayong RAN, which is radio access network, we have the 5G with CN which is a core network. Uh 5G CN is made up of several different management functions. So session management, yeah, later we'll discuss natin yan. Okay? So 5G access network is the portion of the 5G system that provides wireless connectivity to the UE. Later. Let's see kung ano yung uh, details sa later. Okay. Next. So let's go into the core network, the 5G core network. Now, which is would be different from the LTE. So do, those people here na nasa telecommunications, telecommunications na, you'll be familiar with the LTE core. Um, 
in the Philippines since we are NSA or non standalone hindi pa so masyado hindi pa to uh, realized here because we're still uh, non standalone which means that the 5G is piggybacking piggybacking uh, sumasakay lang sa LTE and that means it's using the APC or the 4G core so kumbaga uh, wala siyang sariling core ginagamit niya yung core ng legacy network which is the LTE So, hindi pa ito na-realize. Pero if we go full blast, if we get the full potential of 5G, this is uh, what the 5G core would look like. It's service-based system architecture versus what we're having now, which is the point-to-point. Uh, ano ba yung uh, point-to-point? Um, uh, those, those people who are familiar with the telecommunication industry, yung point-to-point is because, for example, yung, uh, yung Node B or yung BTS goes to Uh, MSC. So, point to point. So, Node B, uh, BTS, go to MSC, MGW, HSS, uh, uh, goes to uh, uh, IMS, to EPC. Di ba? Pag ganun, point to point. Meron kang BTS, meron kang uh, uh, IMS, meron kang BTS, pupunta ka sa EPC. But, in the service-based system architecture, it's network functions. Okay? So, uh, Pinaghiwa, uh, may kanya-kanyang mundo na sila. Okay? Ako yung, ako yung nandito yung policy ko. Uh, okay? Nandito yung network slicing ko. Okay? Nandito, nasan ba yung se- ito, session management and access mobility. Okay? So, these are all network functions. And this is very crucial uh, in cloudifying the network also. Okay? Kasi you can virtualize this network functions. Eh. Okay? And uh, makita mo dito, path for user plane data and uh, control plane. Although, sa LTE, mayroon na rin namang user plane and control plane eh. So, but dito makikita mo uh, kung saan pumupunta yung user plane. Uh, nasaan ba yung ano natin? Uh, okay, yeah. This is the user plane, uh, user equipment. Uh, you have the UU. Okay. If you want to have details on this, just search for system-based architecture and makikita mo yung uh, uh, interfaces nila. So, you have the UU, access network, nating run natin, and then you, uh, your user, user plane function okay, uh, manages your user plane. Okay? Uh, and then, meron siya mga connection with this network functions. Okay? So, kung gusto niya maka-access sa network, dito, nandito yung mag, uh, dito yung mag, dito siya makipag-usap. Okay? Uh, establishing the session, dito siya makipag-usap. Uh, and then, other network functions here. So, 5G service-based system architecture is a new architecture that is being introduced in the 5G system to provide a more flexible, scalable, and service-oriented approach to network architecture. Kasi kung mga tao to, if you, you make this mga tao, if you make this mga tao, if you, if you make these people, uh, mga, ano to, mga introverted people, may kanya-kanya sila. Wala ka silang pakailam sa'yo. Okay? But then, they're doing their job. And um, uh, the system is uh, 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 pinagkakatiwalaan ka na you're doing your job. Okay? So, uh, with this structure, kaya mo siyang uh, may flexibility ka. Kasi uh, hindi sila nagkaka-interfere with each other. But there are, uh, the system is uh, uh, rooting for you that you're doing your job. So, kaya uh, ganyan yung design niya. So, kaya sabi niya, it provides more flexibility, uh, it's scalable, okay? and it's service-oriented approach. Yeah, and scalable. When you say scalable, ito yung blogging term na ginagamit when you're in the cloud. So, if you, if you virtualize all of this, so uh, you can just uh, activate the function or you can program the function. Okay? So, uh, programmable siya. So, uh, yun yung uh, uh, maganda rin sa service-based architecture. So, this is Uh, modular, flexible approach to designing network architectures that can be adapted and customized to meet the specific needs of different applications and services. Oh, so the 5G SBA or the 5G service-based system architecture is designed to enable the creation of new and innovative services and applications by providing a flexible and modular architecture that can be easily adapted and customized to meet the needs of different use cases. It includes several key components including the network function services, 
uh, which are modular services that can be combined and orchestrated to, the, to, to provide the specific functionality required by different applications and services. So another key component of the SBA, 5G SBA, is the service communications interface, which provides a standardized way for different network fun functions and services to communicate with each other. So yung mga kita mo dyan, uusap -usap yan. This helps to ensure interoperability and compatibility between different network functions and services. So nag-uusap-usap sila, but then yung ginagawa nila, wala na silang pakailangan sa isa't isa. So you do you. Parang ganun daw ang motto nila kung tao sila. Ha? So uh, the 5G SBA also includes several other key components and functions, uh, such as the service management, ito nga, yung mga yung, which is responsible for managing the life cycle of different ne network services, functions, and network slice selection. So, kung kung marirealize, marirealize na ng 5G in full potential niya and it uses network slicing, so dito yan, NSSF. Which is responsible for selecting approved network slice for different services. And mind you, this is programmable. So dito mo uh, papasok yung mga AI, mga machine learning uh, that would uh, uh, that would eventually will be an opportunity for everyone. Uh, so yung mga IT can go here and can be part of the te telecom industry. Okay. So overall, the 5G service-based system architecture represents a major step forward in the evolution of network architecture, enabling the creation of new and innovative services and applications that can take full advantage of the capabilities of the 5G system. Okay. By providing a flexible and modular architecture that can be easily adapted and customized to meet the needs of different use cases. The 5G SBA is helping to drive development of new and exciting applications and services that have, that have the potential to transform the way we live and work. Just to give you an overview, uh, at least for the Philippines, um, our um, coverage, uh, I'm not really sure how they got this, but I think... Uh, uh, whenever we do some uh, speed test and all, ito yung data na ho collect. I'm not sure if, if it is the open signal or something. But yeah, but basically this is a crowdsource data, I think. And we can see here um, the approximation of the coverage, network coverage for me the Metro Manila. Or if we zoom out, uh, the entire Philippines. So we can see here the purple. Uh, purple one would be the 5G, uh, 4G plus or the 4G advanced, uh, which is uh, 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 a further enhancement of 4G. Uh, uh, more technically, if you're into the telecommunication industry, yung um, nakikin naririnig nyo na carrier aggregation, uh, uh, you have different frequency, uh, different uh, band na pagkasama-sama yung mag magtutulungan sila to give you more uh, capacity and more speed. Uh, ito yun, 4G plus, and then the 4G. And of course, you have the 3G and the 2G, 2G yung blue. So, uh, so, yan. Makikita nyo dito, the, uh, we almost have, uh, actually, we almost, hindi na ako familiar with the rollout sa Pilipinas. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mostly, uh, makikita mo dito yung uh, covered na ang most of Metro Manila for 5G. Okay. Of course, in the provinces, actually, pera-pera lang din naman kasi. Eh. Um, um, you won't be uh, really, um, what do you call this? Uh, shell out money uh, if there's no business case. So, makita mo dito. Oh, um, uh, Wala masyado pa ng 5G in this area. Yeah. I remember nagpulag kami before. May 2G doon. May antenna. If you go to that base camp, I'm ano kung ano base camp doon. May antenna yung dalawang operator. So, and I think it's only 2G because I'm not sure kung anong gamit nilang backhaul doon. But I managed to upload a picture sa Facebook. Sa pulag. So, yeah. Ano pa ba dito? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah overview din sa mga hindi nasa telco po, ayan na po ang coverage area. And mind you this is crowdsourced. So hindi siya talaga ano, but at least we have an approximation. 
na cover na pala ng 5G ang buong Pilipinas. Yan, no? okay. And also, uh, um, uh, update on other countries. Um, other countries are actually shutting down a legacy uh, network. Uh, maybe because it's the life, life cycle has already been uh, done. Uh, Bawin-bawi na sila doon. Luma na rin kasi. And um, the spectrum, yun yung mahalaga. They want to free up the spectrum uh, para magamit uh, ng higher uh, uh, generation. Okay? So, um, some countries are shutting down 2G, 3G like Singapore. They have already shut down 2G and 3G. Naabutan ko pa yung shutdown, nagsashutdown na sila doon. Uh, and they're uh, retaining the 4G, 5G kasi nga, they want to be a smart city. So, they're really going up the generation. So, kailangan nila ma-free up yung spectrum ng 2G and 3G. Some countries um, are um, just shutting down 3G because there's still uh, use cases in 2G. Uh, marami pa rin may phone. Lalo sa Pilipinas, ang dami pa rin phone na 2G lang. So, uh, you cannot really shut down 2G yet. So, instead, you shut down 3G to uh, uh, free up the spectrum and be used by 4G. And eventually, yung ginagamit ni 4G, gagamitin ni 5G. Di ba? So, yan. Ano lang yan? Depende sa plano ng kumpanya. Depende sa plano ng mga architects yan. So, yun. So, eventually, yan. Uh, uh, yung mga naka-30 something pa, palta nyo na, mabuhin na kayo ng smartphone. <laughs> Baka maiwang kayo. Kasi may nakilala ako, nagdala ng 2G phone sa Singapore, din na nagagamit. So, yung, yung, yung roaming yan, hindi magamit. Okay. So, let's go back to the slides. Commercial lang yan. And also, one commercial nakita ko na. Minority Report, yung movie sinasabi ko kanina. Take Tom Cruise. Yun. Ang daming use cases dun. Hmm. Since late. Okay. So, let's talk about EUTRAN. Um, EUTRAN is Evolved uh, Universal Terrestrial Radio Access Network. Uh, this is 4G. Uh, technical terms lang talaga to. But EUTRAN is... Um, 4G. Uh, galing siya sa UTRAN, which is the 3G. So, ginawa niya kasi nilang evolve. Kasi 4G. So, EUTRAN. Uh, Long-term evolution. So, 4G. Uh, wireless communication standard component. It is the radio access network that provides wireless connectivity. Um, uh, connectivity between the user equipment and the EPC. So, yan. I think sa sabihin sa yung point-to-point to. Base station, Tapos, o, oh, MME, SGW. Talagang mayroon siyang physical point or access point dito. So, kukunin siya ng MME compared to the to the, the service-based architecture kanina ng 5G. Then, you go to the internet. So, ba't natin pinag-uusapan si LTE for uh, ano, uh, 5G tayo? Because we go back to the LTE because sa LTE pa lang, nagkaroon na ng MIMO, yung technology na. And actually, the MIMO or the massive input, massive output antenna technology, ginagamit na ng Wi-Fi. Okay? Kaya yung mga Wi-Fi natin, di ba, kahit ilagay mo yan sa isang sulok, or mayroon pa ng optimal area, but it can manage to to cover the whole house. Kasi nga, because of the MIMO technology they're using. Uh, and also, kaya kailangan natin pag-usapan to is because, um, like in the Philippines, or most operators are still using the non standalone which is 5G is still using uh the the 4G core okay and also uh even in uh in in LTE we already have the uh user plane and control plane so um in in other words pinaghihiwalay lang natin user plane ito yung and ito yung mga payload mo ito yung user traffic mo but then is you need to have signaling. Uh, if if we, if we go to to um uh, to our basic electronics 101 or communication 101, we have a feedback system, right? A closed loop, and we uh, a closed loop system. Now we need to have feedback, because um in any system, if bigay ka lang ng bigay, uh, or hindi lang system, pati pag-ibig din siguro, bigay ka ng bigay pero hindi mo nakikita. Ano na ba? Ano nangyayari? Ano na ba tayo? Which is the control plane. Ayun. Kung gusto nyo imaginein, ganun, di ba? So, 
hindi pwede yung nagpapadala ka lang, hindi pwede nagda-download ka lang. So, kailangan mo rin malaman ano ba, ano na ba tayo. Ganun. <laughs> Joke lang. Uh, so, yun yun. User plane is, the, the, the control plane is the one telling the session is still on. Um, na hindi ka pa nawawala sa network or uh, may maganda ka pa lang, mayroon ka pang magandang signal. Okay? So, nandiyan yan. Para tuloy-tuloy yung uh, user traffic. Kasi ito, ang, ang, ang mahalaga lang naman sa user plane is yung tawag mo, yung, yung packets, yung data. Okay? So, pag, pag na, na, nakikita na yung control plane na uh, hindi na ito maganda, uh, uh, it's not you, it's me. Kailangan natin magtiwalay. So, break na yung, yung connection. So, uh, walang pakialam ngayon yung data dito sa user plane. Okay? Kasi ito, ito yung control plane magsasabi na we're still connected, we're still in the network, uh, pero pag hindi na kaya, pipitawan yan or may pwedeng i-hand over, okay? ilipat sa iba, na kaya. And then the user plane, uh, aayon lang yan kung ano yung sinabi. Okay? Na pag lumip, kunyari, ang mangyari, kunyari sa voice call. Uh, okay? It's part of the user plane. So yung, 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 yung uh, QCI1 mo, o yung ay yung, yung yung voice call mo ah uh, pumapasok so naririnig mo ah hello kamusta ka na ganyan ganyan pero nakita ni control plane ang pangit ng signal mo so kamay Arthur la ra ra ganun na naririnig mo di ba napuputol-putol na Nag, nagiging robot na ah, ay kamusta ka na so yun nararamdaman natin yun that's the user plane so yung data natin na oh, choppy 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 is because the control plane in, pinaglalaban niya pa tayo kung kaya pa <laughs> so ililipat kanya sa ibang network ay ah, ililipat kanya sa ibang cell site at yung cell site na maganda para pag ayan yan okay na okay na kaya totoo yung minsan na pag hindi ka naririnig lalabas ka okay para lumakas which is totoo kasi um, by the time tinutulungan mo yung control plane na makahanap ng magandang signal so yun uh, in layman's term ganon so yung user plane mo ito yung yung packets ito yung 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 uh, ito yung payload natin then the control plane is a signaling So, because we need a, a feedback. So, nagpadala ka, kailangan mo na feedback. Ano ba? Okay pa ba? Ngayon. Ngayon. So, kaya, pero dito, in, uh, in, in, in 5G, uh, the user plane and the control plane has different paths. Okay? And it goes both for uh, the G node B. Uh, ito yung radio access natin going to the core network. Okay. One of the critical features of the 5G network architecture is the separation of the control and the user plane. This separation enables... Actually, in for LTE, nandun na yan. Uh, baka sabihin nyo, si 5G lang. Hindi niya tinitake credit yan. Doon pa lang sa for LTE, meron na separation. This separation enables the network to handle different types of traffic more efficiently, providing a better overall use experience. Uh, the control plane manages the overall network architecture and delivers essential network functions. Uh, user plane is responsible for handling the actual data. Okay. Overall, the separation of the control and user planes in the 5G network architecture is a critical feature that enables the network to provide enhanced functionality and performance compared to previous wireless communication technologies. Okay, let's go to the 5G protocol stack. Okay, so this is based on the age old. Okay. Hindi naman age old. Kasi the OSI, anong ibig sabihin ng OSI? Open source something. OSI. It's been developed in the late 70s, di ba? So, sinasabi nila, um, nag apply pa ba ito ngayon? IP sa IP, TCP, uh, uh, sa mundo na puro IP, TCP na tayo. Yes, it still is. Actually, doon pa rin naman siya nag-base. Yeah? If you can remember, OSI stock. And for those ECE, ECT, alam ko sino... Kabisado nyo ito dahil sa board. And we have mnemonics for this, di ba? Ano mnemonics? You know mnemonics? Yung uh, para maalala mo, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, all, uh, like, all people seem to need data processing. Yan. Para makabisado mo. Pero actually, di ba sa totoo lang, mas matakakalito. Parang pag nalimutan mo nga din yan, mas lalo mo nalilimutan eh. Pero yeah, uh, meron nga ng Tagalog to eh. Um, Uh, yung parang nada pa, something nada pa. Nalimutan ko na yung taas na to eh. Taong nada pa, ganyan. So, yun kaya kapisa to. Pero it's still, it's still a valid uh, model for for the protocol. And when you say protocol stack, kasi it's, it's um, 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 ito yung tumutulong for, for, uh, for, for a system to work. 
kung baga, may kanya-kanya siya ng trabaho, okay? Like for example, yung mga uh, yung mga in caps uh, yung mga uh, ano sa ganun. Uh, yung modulation, demodulation, syempre nasa mga physical layer 'yan, yung uh, IP na dito sa network layer, uh, yung tungkol sa mga yung mismong application na, yung mga application na ginagamit mo yung nakikita na ng tao na sa application layer. So, uh, may kanya-kanya silang work. Uh, na ginagampanan. So, the, the 5G protocol stack is a collection of protocols and functions that work together to enable communication between the user equipment and network. Uh, the protocol stack is divided into three main categories, uh, the radio access network protocol stack and the non-access stratum protocol stack. Um, makita mo dito, uh, in the user protocol stack, kasi nga, pinag-usapan natin kanila, user plane, di ba? So, mag, may medyo may pagkakaiba sila. Sa user plane uh, stack, Makikita mo dito, uh, ito yung protocol niya. Uh, UE, nakipag-usap sa... Gnode B is the run natin, ha? Sa 5G. Kasi sa sa 4G is E Node B. This one is G Node B. Actually, nalimutan ko ano yung G dito. Basta, anyway, ba, parang arbitrary na lang ata na... Um, na, na tawag dito? Convention to, eh, na nag-stick na eh. So, uh, and then UE to G Node B naman for the control plane is a different stack. Uh, makikita mo kasi dito sa control control plane, uh, ang pinagkaiba nila is the SDAP. Dito kasi yung, nandito kasi, dito kasi dumadaan na yung, uh, ano natin, uh, user data. But here, in the control, uh, meron siya dito na non-access stratum, hindi na siya dumadaan sa radio access network. Dumadaan na siya sa core, which is yung nandiyan yung access natin. So, ito yung sasabi na uh, pwede ba akong kumunek dito sa network na to. Uh, you remember we are still sim based now, diba? If if you're a globe uh, subscriber, you cannot connect to uh, a smart network. You can only connect to a globe network. So dito din magkakaalaman. But then still you have the RRC here, uh radio resource, ah, uh, uh, radio. Radio resource tama, radio resource dito. And ito yung uh, if may mga EC ipo dito na sa telecom and doing um uh, drive testing yung mga layer 3 messages natin, dito natin nakikita. PDC, PRLC, uh, the Mac layer, na ito yung mga, uh, yung mga HARQ, uh, yung mga, uh, ano ang term doon? Um, um, uh, I forgot. Basta, uh, andito yung mga, ano eh, um, mga, I forgot the term, but yung, but anyway, <laughs> sorry. Pero dito kasi yung uh, di ba pag meron kang mo rin term din eh meron kang di, uh, meron kang data magkakaroon ka ng header magkakaroon ka ng mga mga uh, bits to to mga error correction bits yan mga nandito yan okay? and then the physical layer nandito yung mga modulation demodulation dito yung sa mga antenna dito do yung mga mga uh, RF uh, processing sa physical layer okay so yan yung protocol stack medyo uh, Ma, ano siya, ma technical but then if you want to read it, more on it, you can search for the protocol stack and look for each other. But if you are a practicing, maybe a drive tester or a practicing optimizer, um, hindi naman natin kailangan talaga na malaman to uh, in detail. Kasi, uh, 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 for example, if, uh, uh, for for uh, someone who is processing a drive test, drive test kasi, sin yung ginagawa ng mga uh, mga ibang engineers uh, para masukat yung eh, nagme-measure. Okay? So, sasakay sila sa sasakyan o maglalakad, daladala na yung mga measuring equipment nila. So, titingnan nila kung gano'ng kalakas yung signal, ano yung quality. And usually, when you're deep, deep, uh, deep diving into that blogs, uh, nak nakikita nila mga messages yung nandito sa RRC na. So, yung mga RRC connection update, RRC connection success, yan, ito na yung nakikita natin. Uh, at doon tayo nagkakaroon uh, doon yung nagkakaroon ng um, uh, analysis na natin nakikita na ah, nagkaroon ng failure dahil dito okay ano pa bang mayroon dito uh, protocol sa okay is responsible for managing the radio interface between the UE and the network it includes several different layers physical yun nga um, MAC control MAC or the medium access layer Radio link control and uh, packet data convergence protocol, which is the PDCP. 
Okay, so overall, the 5G protocol stack is designed to provide a flexible and customizable network architecture that can enable the creation of new and innovative services and applications. Okay. So with this, let's talk about the split. Okay, bakit may split? May hiwala yan. Kasi uso po ang hiwala yan. <laughs> Joke lang. Um, the, uh, R, the RU, CU, DU splits. Okay. So, ito yung split na hindi talaga naghihiwalay. Ang sinasabi lang dito sa split na to is um, part to ng disaggregation. I mean, if you split the system, um, mas madali kasing mag-assign na o yung unang split, dito ka. Yung gitnang split, dyan ka. Yung huling split, dito ka. Okay. Depende sa may gusto mag-implement. So, meron kang, hindi ka tulad ng mga legacy the before na you have the BTS and you have the BSC. Yun na yun. Okay? So, um, uh, um, uh, masyara siyang monolithic na dere-derecho uh, na yung, wala kang flexibility na pwede mong uh, uh, ilagay, kunyari. Kasi ngayon, for example, before, uh, if you go to a, an old site, kunyari, for a 2G site or 3G site, uh, or older, before, before pa, um, you, you have that. Later, makikita natin yung description, uh, makikita natin yung schematic mamaya nung antenna eh, at ng, ng tower. Makita mo may antenna and then meron kang RRU, yung pa-process ng radio. Uh, ah, ito pala. Teka. Sorry. Ayan. Ayan. So, RU, which is the radio unit, and then, ito, dito kasi, nandito kasi yung mga modulation, demodulation, di ba? Kasi, from analog signal, you have to convert it to digital. Kasi yun yung, yung mga passive receiver natin, which is the antenna, mga transducer lang naman sila eh. So they can, we, we, uh, uh, yung mga classic na antenna, they get the signal, then you they, uh, process it, digitize it, so dito yung sa RU, and then you send it to the BBU, which is the baseband unit. Dito na yung mga computations. And in the old, old, old architecture, um, Tatlo lang talaga sila. You have the RU, the BBU, and the core. So, yung antenna mo nandito. So, uh, yung RU mo, either, before kasi malayo to eh, nung 2G, yung antenna mo sa taas, tapos may mahaba kang ano dito, kable, tapos nasa radio room to. Nasa yung mga, yung mga, makakakita ka ng mga tower, di ba? Mayroon siyang parang trailer sa baba. Nandun niya sa loob, RRU nandun yung baseband. So, makakakita ka ng, uh, ng tawag dito, cabinet dyan, nandito yung, nandito yung baseband, tapos nandito dyan yung mga radio, paiba-iba yan, hinahatak-hatak pa yan, lalaki ng dati. But now, uh, as we progresses, 3G, 4G, yung RRU, inilagay niya dito sa taas, para mas malapit, mas, mas lossless. Okay? So, yun lang, hanggang dun yun. Now, they thought of, yeah, let's split it more. Okay, so the RUCUDU split in 5G refers to the separation of functions within the radio access network or the RAN architecture. This split separates the radio unit, okay, the central unit, and the distributed function. So instead, before, meron kang front hole, may back hole, nagkaroon ka ngayon ng mid hole kasi nga, in-split mo further pa sila. So you have the RU, and then the baseband is split into the distributed unit and the uh, central unit. So, this enables greater flexibility kasi ito, pwede mo siyang ilagay dito, pwede mo siyang ilagay sa off-site, pwede nga din sa site. Okay? So, uh, pwede itong virtual, pwede rin hindi. Okay? So, may flexibility, depende sa implementation. Pero, sa 3GPP approach, dinefine na nila na, okay, we split it into CU, DU, and RU. Oh, kung may implementation ka later magkakaroon tayo ng iba't ibang um, options eh so at least meron kang separation unlike dito yung RRU lang ang pwede mong maano, uh, malipat yung hanggang doon na lang but then it's uh, wala kang flexibility with the baseband unit and mind you the location of the the units are essential para makabilis kasi um, it all depends on how fast the data would go in between these units. So, um, dun, uh, the way we 
design the system or design, design the network kung saan ilalagay itong mga to would uh, eventually make us realize yung one millisecond uh, uh, what they call this? One millisecond latency. Kasi yung, yung, yung bilis na yun is nakadepende kung uh, gano'n ba kabilis. Kasi eventually lahat yan dito dadaan eh. So kung dito lang meron ka ng lag or meron ka ng dito hindrance, hindi mo marirealize yung one millisecond latency. And dito na rin pumapasok na tong front hole na to are using optical uh, uh, optical fiber. Before, we're, yung malalaki yung uh, kaya mong hawakang tubo, yun yung mga feeder cable before na pumunta sa RU, yung lalaki. Na pag umulan, tapos tumagal, napasukan ng tubig, kumapangit na. Yun yung mga VSWR mo, if you go back to uh, 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 Electronics 101, na pag meron kang reflection doon, kasi may tubig. One time, may, may, yun yung mga malimit namin problema before, yung mga old-old uh, 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 sites na may mga feeder cable ka, malalaki kasi yun eh. So pag napasukan siya ng tubig or kaya um, what you call this na nabutas tapos yun nga nag ano na lumabas na yung mga kable nagkakaroon na ng problema. But now this is optical uh, uh, optical fiber. So the RU is responsible for the physical layer ito uh, including the radio frequency signal processing and transmission like in sinabi ko mo kanina. Okay? Uh, the CU is responsible for the control and management of the network, including scheduling and resource allocation. And the DU is responsible for the distribution of and processing of data, including modulation. So, yung mga decision na, uh, kunyari, yung mga decision mong sa buhay na 5 to 10 years, andito yan, sa CU. Pero yung mga decision mo ngayon, kung, kunyari, patawid ka, may parating na sasakyan, tatalon ka ba o titigil lang dito sa DU? <laughs> kung gusto mong imagine na kasi kailangan mong mag-decide agad-agad dito sa DU kaya ito ngayon yung medyo gumagalaw eh if malapit ba siya sa RU o malapit siya sa CU dito magkakatalo kung gano'ng kabilis ang response ito sa CU kasi dito na yung mga ano eh, um, uh, control, management so hindi scheduling so allocation hindi mo siya kailangan real time ayun pala real time real, non-real time so yun yung term pala so yung real time nandito uh, distribution processing of data, including modulation, coding, error correction. By splitting these functions across multiple units, 5G networks can be deployed in a more flexible and scalable manner. For example, multiple RUs can be connected to single DCU and uh, CU, enabling uh, greater capacity and coverage in high-density areas. Okay. This approach also enables the use of more efficient and cost-effective network architectures, such as cloud RAN. Okay. So, uh, pwede mo nang ma-cloudify ito. RU, CU, DU split is also designed to enable greater efficiency in the deployment of 5G networks. By separating the physical and control functions, operators can more easily deploy and manage networks with varying capacity and coverage requirements. So, overall, the RU... CU, DU, split in 5G is a key feature that enables greater flexibility, scalability, and efficiency in the deployment of 5G networks. Okay. Yan. So further, eh, ano pa natin? So makikita natin dito in 5G wireless communication systems, the layer 1, 2, and 3 functional split is a critical feature that enables greater flexibility and scalability. So makita natin dito yung RU, DU, and CU. So, hinati pa yan ng different uh, uh, different uh, uh, modules. Okay? So, yung processing ng different, different functions. Different functions. So, makita mo dito yung RU, na yung RF, and then yung low physical. And then you have the high, yung physical hinati mo pa, you have the high physical here. Low MAC, high MAC. If you go back to the protocols, right, you have the physical, the MAC, the RLC. So, hinati-hati pa nila yan. And you have these options. Nakadefine yan dito. So, um, layer 1 functions, okay? Uh, this is uh, more on the physical. Uh, layer 2 functions, more on the data link. And layer 3 functions, more on the network layer. So, yung RRC, PDCP, nandito. So, the physical layer manages the physical transmission of data over the air interface between the UE and the network. So, yeah, dito yung channel coding, modulation, geomodulation. Okay. Uh, dito naman sa data link, 
dito. Uh, manages data transmission over the radio interface uh, between the UN and the network. This includes uh, radio link control, packet data convergence protocol, or the PDCP. And the network layer dito, yan, uh, manages the overall network architecture and delivers essential network functions such as session management, mobility, and authentication. Okay. In addition, this layer includes functions such as RRC and PDCP. By separating these functions across multiple layers within the network architecture, layer 1, layer 2, and layer 3 functional splits in 5G enable greater flexibility and scalability in deploying 5G networks. So, for example, operators can more easily deploy and manage networks with varying capacity and coverage requirements by separating the physical layer from the higher layers. So, this usually... Itong, pag sinabi mo kasing low, hindi naman itong uh, kababaan ng, ng stado sa buhay. When we say low, it's, it's, it's in the lower, uh, it's in, you're, when you say low, you're going more on the physical layer. Okay? So, ito yung mga um, um, more, mas malapit sa interface mo in the physical world. Kasi ito medyo, mga ano na to eh, mga logical na kasi itong mga to eh. Okay? Uh, when you say logical, you can, uh, it can it can be uh, uh, defined by the software or uh, it, it, it's, ima it's imaginary but it's actually happening. So, ito pwede mo tong, um, itong mga, itong mga logical, pwede mo siyang ilayo from the physical. So, kaya nga yung sabi ko kanina, di ba, the, 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 the distributed unit, the DU, can be near the RU, it can be away from the RU uh, into the cloud. Okay? So, yan. So, depende yan sa options. So let's go here logical lo, uh, logical sorry logical run disaggregation. So makita mo dito yan nga uh, remote unit uh, you have the distributed unit so yan dito pala yon real time kasi sabi ko kanina. And then you have the central unit centralized unit non real time. So makita mo dito yung mga fun yung mga high functions niya na <clears throat> excuse me Collection management, radio pair uh, configuration, handover cell selection, reselection. Basically, uh, sa mga nasa telecom, nasa communication, telecommunication, nasa optimization, yung mga parameters nyo uh, na sineset na mga thresholds, yan. Uh, uh, of course, galing siya dito, nandiyan yung mga parameters mo, dito yung infinity feed yan. Na pag ganito na kapangit ang signal mo, kailangan mag-handover, ganito, kailangan mag-handover. Pero yung mga mabilisan, like scheduling, scrambling, interference coordination, uh, segmentation, multiplexing, er uh, multiplexing, demultiplexing, error correction, and dito tayo sa DU, RLC, MAC, and high, uh, high Physical. And then you have the, yung mga MIMO natin, beamforming, yung malang malalapit sa physical. Kasi di ba yung mga MIMO, ito yung mga nagbumubuga. Bumubuga yan sa mga UEs natin. Dito yan. Ito hindi to pwedeng lumayo. Dapat talaga nasa site to kasi nasa antena 'yan eh. Nasa tower. Nandiyan yung RU natin. Okay? IFP ano nga ba to? FF? Fast Fourier transform, inverse fast Fourier transform. Yung mga ibinabaksak natin dati. Nandito pala nagagamit. Pero hindi natin kailangan alamin 'yon kasi andiyan na eh. Okay? So, uh, uh pinaghirapan na 'yan ng mga nag ano, naggumawa ng mga equipment. So, hindi natin kailangan alalahanin yan. But then, yun, basta pagkakatiwalaan natin siya na gumagana siya dito. And then, you can see here the ECPRI. I want to mention it. Ano nga ibig sabihin nito? Ito, ito, ito yung um, uh, common uh, public uh, interface. Okay? Um, ito yung optical siya sabi ko. Dito. Ito, mahalaga to because dito mga yun magkakatalo uh, uh, kung gaano kabilis, kung kaya bang is support yung massive MIMO kung kaya ba uh, 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 tanggapin yung maraming mga user. So, dito, mahalaga yan. Okay? Hi, Sir JM. Yes po? So, we're, we're, all, are, are, we're almost actually of time for our second speaker. Ah, but... okay. Sige. Um, ano pa bang nandito? Wait. Yeah, medyo ano na to. So, I think these are all Mm. Ano bang gusto ko? Yeah, ito lang gusto ko ano dito. So yung mga options niyan, 
uh, magagamit yan dito when you are deciding where to split. And we can see here that uh, the the more you split, uh, uh, what do you call this? Nandito tayo ngayon. Okay? That um, the, um, the RSE, the max physical layer, are uh, naka, malapit sa RRU. The more you go up into the CUDU, do natin na re-realize yung delay, oh mas bumibilis. So, ito yung target sana natin dito okay, in the near future to realize okay, yung uh, low latency. So, at least dito, uh, na namimit pa rin naman natin yung user throughput o oh, 400 Mbps, 100 Mbps, right? Okay. So, yan. Ang gusto ko lang sabihin dito sa split na to. So, ito, decision to ng mga, archi ng mga architects natin sa mga operators. So, mobile operators need the flexibility to pick and choose different splits based on the same COTS-based hardware and network components by using different software implementation. Uh, okay. Okay, ito. So, last. Pakita ko lang. Just some, for those na hindi familiar with the telecommunication industry, uh, ito yan po. Para ma-visualize nyo. Pag nagda-drive-drive po kayo, nagbabiyahe, tingin-tingin din po tayo ng mga antena, ng mga... Ng mga Tower, makita nyo yung mga antena, ayan yung mga physical layers natin, tumatanggap, nagbubuga ng signal. Okay, uh, ito yung baseband unit natin. Okay, nasa outer. Ngayon pa rin naman yung implementation natin for now. Okay, sa LTE natin, kasi nga NSA pa tayo, yung 5G sumasakay lang. Ayun pala, common public radio interface, nalimutan ko yung radio. So that's CPR, which is fiber optic. Okay, and then you have the enhanced public radio interface. Ito yung remote unit, mas malapit na sa antena. Okay. Yan. Yan ang example mga antena natin. Makita natin natin, makita natin, active antena. Kung isa mo kasi active antena, yun, yung mga massive MIMO natin eh. Yung mga nagbe forming uh, Okay. And then these are some terms that you can look into. Uh, massive MIMO, MIMO 8x4, 4x4. Uh, but may GPS. Kasi ngayon TDD natin, di ba? Asynchronous. Kailangan nila lang uh, synchronization. They need to synchronize. And uh, kailangan mo ng uh, base uh, pagbabasihan which is uh, sa GPS. So, yung uh, clock, may clock sila, may rhythm na kailangan pagsabayin. Kasi pag hindi, ma-out of sync sila lahat. And then you have the FR1. Ito yung ginagamit natin na now. This is the sub-6 gigahertz. Okay? So, ito yung mga ngayon. It, uh, FR2, ito yung millimeter wave. Para at least alam nyo. E pag sabi, FR1, FR2, ah, alam ko yan. FR1, ito yung ngayon. FR2, this is the millimeter wave. Ito yung mas mataas na. Ito yung mga 24 gigahertz, mga and above. And then, yep, you have the DDD and you have the FTD. Napag-usapan natin. And then, the non-stand alone, which is, yun nga yung mga usual implementation right now. And the stand alone, which is, ito yung end goal natin for all. And then, of course, the voice services. Uh, and then, terrestrial, non-terrestrial network. Um, ito yung mga, ayun, mga satellite na. Okay. We can get the help uh, of the satellite kasi may mga hard to reach areas that we, we need to have connections so we can use the non-terrestrial network. Ter terrestrial network. And then you have the public network and then the private network. Mind you, the 5G is not only for net, uh, for globe, for smart. May mga, mga, pub, may mga private networks din yan. Like, usually ginagamit sa mga uh, mining uh, sa mga sa mga oil and mining na may sarili silang network na na, uh, na ini-implement and they usually go to 5G so MIMO just to show you massive MIMO ito yon single MIMO so ang gusto ko lang pakita dito is um, the more you have here marami ka uh, more chances of winning parang ganun parang raffle <laughs> so yun lang yon okay MIMO ties, 4x4, 4x2, 8x8, 2x4. Yan, marami yan. And may mga mga, mga 64x64 pa. Mga massive MIMO yun. Diversity gain, MIMO benefits, array gain, okay? And facial multiplexing. Okay? So, communications 101 natin, maaala natin yan. And then, the beam for me, of course, yan. Okay? Napag-usapan na rin naman natin kanina. And then, okay, lastly, 
you have the single user and the multi-user MIMO. So mayroon kang MIMO, but then um, uh, you can have like, kasi pag single user, tigitigis na kayo ng beam. But then, pwede mo pa siyang idoblehin. For one beam or PRB, you can have like two UEs. Pasabayin. And you can set the parameters here para hindi sila mag-interfere. May ganyan. Marami na rin nagtatrial ng ganito, yung multiple user I, MIMO. Kung baga, ang gusto ko lang sabihin dito is with MIMO, you can double the capacity. Okay? Uh, para mas madami. Makagamit. Okay, example of MIMO antenna. Yeah, massive MIMO yan. Kung nakakita kayo ng parang laptop na ganyang malaki, square, that's massive MIMO. And then you have, the, ito yung usually yung malaki kita natin, the 8, 8 by 8 antenna. And yan, ito yung mga arrays natin. Yan yung usually yung mga beam na yan. Beam, kanya-kanya yan. Okay. And then you have also the voice, lastly. Uh, meron ding voice sa LTE, uh, sa, sa, uh, sa VONR ang tawag natin. Uh, na pwede siya mag back into 4G uh, and then fall back to 3G. Pero right now, what's happening is uh, sa, sa network natin na ah, uh, in the Philippines, we have, uh, pagtatawag ka at nasa 5G ka, you go to fold. Either you go to Volte or you fall back to 3G. Kaya nakakatawag pa rin tayo kahit naka 5G. But then, later on, if we are stand alone, we have the VONR. And it's actually a PS handover if you go to a different v Volte. Or it can also go to uh, uh, 3G. 